pastors in the world. Can we thank God for my leader and the person of Bishop Shante Younger with the Ramp Church International. Um, let's preach. Uh, Second Kings, the fourth chapter. What's up to y'all? Second Kings, the fourth chapter. I'll do the best I can. Second Kings 4. Pray for me. I'm going through the symptoms of this second vaccination shot. And so my body is still in Lynchburg. Uh, I mean, I preached through bronchitis three times. I really don't care. Um, but I just need y'all to pray for me. We're going to get through this tonight. All right? Uh, second Kings, the fourth chapter. Now, um, hold on for a second, Josh. I'm nervous, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Um, I'm nervous, evolution empowerment. I'm nervous tonight. Because the last time I preached this text, and please don't be afraid, the last time I preached this text, three days later, I suffered two heart attacks. And it was because the Lord was trying to get me to manifest this text. But I lived through it. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Um, Verse number one, now there cried a certain woman, that'll be all right, wife, woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, uh, saying thy servant, she's going to pray this whole sermon, y'all, my husband is dead. Verse number three, then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Uh, verse number seven. Then she came, told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay thy debt, live thou and thy children off the rest. Because my brother brought me here to preach a meal, but I'll preach a snack so he'll invite me back. Please agitate your neighbor with my message. And they've been sitting next to you longer than two minutes. They got what you got, you got what they got, so we should be just fine. Say neighbor, L live off the rest. You may be seated. Apostolic in my feet. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> because I am apostolic. Um, I don't want to debate, but there's only one way. All right. Um, so tonight, um, I want to deal with something. There's, on, there's, only, there's only one way. Right. Uh, and so, um, woo! You know, I don't believe there's only, you know, three. No, there's only one way. No, there's only one. I don't want to offend. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend you. But whenever I'm getting ready to get in trouble, Xavier Scott, I ain't got time to call Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Or lock it open my mouth and say, Jesus! There's only one way. Thank you. We're in a very pivotal time um, because um, I've been understanding something. Um, and I've been telling the people of God everywhere we've gone the truth. The truth is um, they keep telling us we're in a pandemic. Now, I didn't know we were in a pandemic because I made more money sitting at the house. <coughs> I made more money sitting at home than I did 
when I was running my body in the ground. And um, they say we're supposed to be struggling, but I wouldn't know what it looks like. Because God has been so good, what they say it hasn't been my reality. And I need, Josh, you can take a break. I need like five people in this room to kind of open your mouth for a minute because what people said about you hasn't been your reality. There have been some statements they made about you. There have been some word curses that people put on you. But I need you to be honest that life has not been what some people spoke concerning your life. There were certain things that they set up for you. There were certain things that they planned for you. But somehow, some way, God put you in the midst of a detour. And what you thought was a distraction was actually your protection. And God had to take you another way in order for you, in order for you to avoid Avoid what somebody else had set up. Is it not crazy that there were certain people in your life that was trying to sabotage your life because you do not move how they try to manipulate you? And so you got to be careful of certain people in your life that try to walk with you, that walk with you long enough to see the prophecy, but won't walk with you long enough for you to get the for you to walk through the process. They were there when you got the word, but they won't stick with you until the word comes to pass. If my pastor was here, he would say God would lure you in with a prophecy and then drop you off in a process. And God will give you a word. And then he'll give you instruction. And you've got to be careful of the people who hear the word but are not willing to walk with you while you get the instruction. And so, as it hold me up here. And so there is, there is, there is, there is a danger there's a danger in the body of Christ of people who stick around for prophecy. Excuse me, people who stick around for prophecy but will abandon you for process. And so these are the same people overseer um, because they're watching. These are the same people that will tell you to start the church but they will never come to visit. These are the same people that will tell you to go. It's in you. It's in you. And they won't come and, and they won't sow. It's the, these are, these are, these are the same. They're the same people. They're the same. They are the same. They're the same people. They're the same people, Jay, that'll push you to get married, but they won't honor your wife. They're the same people. They're the same people that'll push you to do something. And the moment that you get out there, they are nowhere to be found. you got to be careful of people who stick around for prophecy, but they're nowhere to be found for process. Because there is a process. There is. There, there, there is. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about, oh God. I'm concerned concerning unprocessed people. Self made bishops. My leader laid hands on me, so I'm there. Self made pastors, self made elders, self made apostles that have the title but don't have the function. We all right? We good here. You have the you have the title. I don't care how many plaques are in your office. I don't care how many pictures you take with your presiding bishop. You can have the title and not have the power. And there were too many yonder. There were too many people who are sitting in the position, but they do not have the power. They are sitting in the place, but they do not have the power. Just because you have the garments, I'm about to get in trouble. Just because you have the garments doesn't mean you have the power. You don't even have to show your license to get that stuff. All you need is the money. And there are people trying to pay to look like something they are not consecrated to carry. to my text. I'm not lost. I'm not lost. And so I'm concerned. I'm concerned about people who look good on the outside. They look real good on the outside. They can speak in tongues. They can shake. They can shiver. They can quiver. And they can dance. But the problem, the problem is 
You've gotten a word in you. I'm, co I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming to my God. You have no word in you. No word. And so there were some people who are walking around alive and dead. They are alive and they are dead at the same time on the inside. And there are, there are too many, oh God, there are too many, there are too many people who don't understand. Now I'm going to say something that's a little strong and I pray that um, y'all got my back. We got you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We are in a very strange time because who, Lord, oh God, we're in a strange time because there are generals who are dying and leaving problems rather than an inheritance. Oh God. There are generals who there are generals who are dying with a baton because they won't pass it. And so now mantles are being picked up rather than passed. Oh my God. Because they are dying with a baton in their head. It's so strange to me because here in our text, a prophet is dead. He's left a debt. I'm in your Bible. He's a prophet. He has God's word, but he's left a debt for his wife and his children. <clears throat> now, a oh, woman of God, uh, the problem we're having here is this. Hey, dear, the problem we're having, sir, uh, uh, brother, the problem we're having uh, is um, back in that time, according to the law, if the father had a debt, once he had died, the children became slaves. And they became slaves until the point that the debt was worked off. Okay. They were slaves until the debt was worked off. And so the father is dead. Uh, uh, the father, the father is dead. Now, if I was, if I wasn't who I was, I would not do what I'm getting ready to do. But because I am who I am, I'm going to say what I'm getting ready to say. Now, I want you to notice how half of this church became distracted by Elder putting this extra mm -hmm. sign down. That's my friend. That's Eddie Wright. Oh, he was there with me. He was there every time we had church in Nightdale. He opened the door, and he was back there shouting and dancing with us as we were sweating until we left. We was over in our time, but he was back there shouting. What blessed me, well, it was hot. It was hot. But we was giving God everything we had. Now, um, it was hot. But hey, we we gave God what we had. Now, he put the he put the, you hear me? He put the extra sign back up. Now, what bothered me was not the fact that they was distracted. What bothered me is that they didn't pay attention to what was happening. He was fixing the exit sign so they could see how to get out. Lord, I don't know who you are in this room, but God's about to fix it where he can show you how you can get out. I need somebody in this room to take a break real quick and open your mouth because God just showed you where the exit was. Yeah, he just saw. He showed you. That's not my text. So the, so the prophet. So the prophet has left a death. Show me. Lord, you may not show me what. But show me how to get out. Show me. Um. has left the debt and the children are slaves <coughs> live off the rest the children are slaves so um, the woman of God comes and she says the creditors are coming to take my two children and uh, they're going to work them to death like the creditors the creditors are coming and um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid because my children are going to be slaves. Um, the, 
creditors are coming, and I'm afraid because my children are going to be slaves for God. What's getting ready to happen to my kids is not even my fault. And um, my, my pastor, um, um, my pastor, y'all may hear me quote my pastor a lot, but that's who feeds me. <laughs> and I show up to the table every Sunday. that he said something that it may not be my fault but it's going to be my responsibility <laughs> which means there were some covenants made before you were born there were some covenants made before you were born and the enemy because he can't get you would do everything to get your children um, the enemy would do everything he can to get your children. And um, we are in a pivotal uh, moment right now in the message. Um, I know this and get me a chair. Um, we are in a pivotal point uh, right now in the message because you've got to make it your responsibility. You've got to make it your responsibility right now to begin to understand that what it is that God is getting, thank you, is getting ready to do, even though it might be strange, if you're not careful, your children will begin to fear death. Because there is something I'm learning that when the parents play, the children play. That's why, that's why you've got to be careful of what you say and what you do. That's why you, that's why you got to be, I'm going to preach from the beach chair because it's better. Um, th that's why you got to be careful what you do and what you say. Because the enemy, if he can get your seed, oh Lord, if the enemy can get your seed, then he can cut off your legacy. Oh, God. Um, Josh, you can hold on for a second. I need five of y'all in this room to open your mouth because as of tonight, your legacy is secure. You missed. I said, as of tonight, as of tonight, I said, I need you to open your mouth and praise God because your legacy is secure. What you went through, your children won't have to face. What you went through, your children won't have to go through. They won't have to go through that pain. They won't have to go through the heartache. They won't have to go through the identity of a father not being there or a mother not being there. I need you to open your mouth because your legacy. She, she, um, she says the creditors are coming. He says, all right, listen, do me a favor. Um, go to the house to hurry up. I go to the house, get you some jars of oil, um, borrow some from the neighbors. Now, I don't like people in my business. <coughs> I don't like you in my business even if you know my business. I'm getting comfortable, so. I don't like you in my business even if you were there to see what happened. Don't discuss it unless I bring it up. Don't ask me nothing about it. We can only talk about it upon my level of comfortability. I think that's fair. And uh, I, I, I understand. I understand something um, that she says, why? He says, go to your neighbor's. Borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Get as much as you can. Do 
there was much complaining. Now, I just saw something in this text I've never seen before. <coughs> Josh, you know what just messed me up? He said to her, go get some from your neighbor. Borrow not a few. Here it is. You have got to change some things about you. Wow. You ready? And I've never seen this in the text. Adrian, 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 I've never seen the text. Here it is. It really just messed me up for real. Because go to your neighbors and borrow not a few. You do yourself a disservice if the people around you can't meet your need. You do yourself a disservice if the people around you got the same amount of money as you. He says, go to your neighbors and borrow not a few, which means they had more than she had. If you're the smartest person in your circle, if you're the richest person in your circle, that's not a circle, it's a line. You don't have time. Stop making people who are your equal your connections. Oh my God. you got to be careful because the people around her had the power to meet her need. To your neighbors. Come here. Go to your neighbors. Borrow some vessels. Not a few. Now, even that's strange to me. <coughs> even that's strange to me because, wait a minute. She already has a debt. Now you want me to borrow vessels creating more debt. Now let me tell you something. If you borrow something from me, my first question to you is going to be, what, oh, come on. When am I going to get it back? When am I going to see it again? When, when am I going to see it again? When am I, when, <laughs> that's my kind of preacher. When am I going to see it again? Can I borrow... For me, I don't mind lending much. But if you start asking me to borrow yeah. wow. money, wow. you know, I don't. I normally don't question. I try not to question anything over one hundred fifty dollars. <coughs> now, now I'm about to tell y'all. <coughs> I'm about to tell y'all a secret about me. My wife kind of don't like it, so y'all pray for me. Anything under one hundred fifty dollars to me is a wash. So if I go somewhere and I spend eighty five dollars and I lose it, I don't care. Wow. It's a wash to me. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you why. People are like, oh my God, it's eighty five dollars. Let me tell you something. If eighty five dollars being lost is gonna hurt me, eighty five dollars ain't gonna help me. Oh, 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 God's stretching me concerning my money. Because what I need God to do costs more than $85. Okay. Jayla, I don't know about you, but Josh, I don't know. The prayer request we've all talked about. What I need God to do is more than $150. And so I don't trip, I don't trip about money anymore. Because that's a place where God can trust me. Because what I need, I don't even want to go to the bank for. Yeah, what I what I need, I'm in the text. I don't even want to go to the bank for. No, no, I don't want. I don't want to owe nobody nothing. I want someone to call me and be like, I don't know why, but the Lord told me to give you ten thousand dollars. And you know what I'm gonna say? I don't know why He did either, but you can meet me at the McDonald's up the street. Let me tell you something. Because what God, what God's getting ready to do for you, you have to always be in the posture of receiving. See, the problem is, I said something last night. I was in the house. I was talking. I was talking to my wife. I said God has really been challenging me. Say, I said God's been challenging me because what I realized is something had happened. Something had happened, and I was having this uh, like random daydream, and it was like some God wanted to give me this money and I did not and I questioned him for it and I said I, I'm, I'm good
it. And what I realized is it's not that I didn't believe that God could do it. I was as shocked he wanted to do it all at one time. Oh, God. And some of you have got to remove yourself from the equation. Oh, my. You've got to remove yourself from the equation because God is trying to meet the total need at one time. I don't know who you are in this room, but I need you to open your mouth because God's about to do it right the first time. I said, open your mouth because God's going to do it right the first time. do it right the first time and they're gonna call me crazy they're gonna call me crazy they're gonna call me crazy oh keep, oh, keep the track ready they're gonna call me crazy but i'm gonna obey god i'm gonna obey god i'm gonna obey god now let me tell you one thing i know for sure two things i know for certain i'm gonna wait till he leaves the room Thank you, Overseer. One thing I know for sure, two things I know for certain about Overseer Johnson is he will take anything <laughs> and make it something. Yeah. 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 He will take anything and make it something. Now, I'm not being disrespectful, but I'm obeying God. And so I decree and I declare that the next location is going to be turnkey. I release a blessing. I release the, because there's apostolic succession on me. I told you, I'm not trying to dishonor the man of God. I'm loosing something in the atmosphere. I decree and declare over Overseer Johnson that the next location, because this is not the total thing. This is the stopping place. But I decree and I declare that the next place that he goes, that God's going to give him a turnkey miracle. That God's going to give him a turnkey blessing. He won't have to work too hard. He won't have to work too hard. He won't have to sweat and lose sleep over it. But I decree and I declare because of his faithfulness to somebody else's vision. God's going to give him a turnkey blessing. If you're not jealous and you believe that God's going to do it, I need you to open your mouth because God's going to do it right the first time. He's going to do it right the first time. He's going to do it just like he said. He's going to do it. Marisha, on your way to your seat, tell somebody God's going to do it right the first time. <laughs> Sit down before we dance. one again because he heard me the first the first time and he's going to do it right the first time all right let's sing along before we dance i feel something coming the first time so. going to do it right the first time. And for some of y'all who's saying, but this is my, this is my 10th time trying it. Well, I'll prophesy to you that when God does it, it's going to feel like 
Because uh, uh, ain't nothing like the real thing. So, anyway, and so, um. The problem is, the problem is, I, I see, I feel, and I smell a praise, but I don't trust them to let me finish preaching. But God, God is going to do it right. Borrowed not a few. So we go in the house. We get in the house. Shut the door. Shut the door. It can't. It can't. What's coming can't happen until you. There was some conversation. Shut the door. There were some deals <coughs> you're trying to make happen for yourself. Shut the door. There were some things that you've been stressing about. There have been some things you've been questioning God about that he's already rejected. Shut the door. I'm not in your Bible, 1 Samuel 16. Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul for I've rejected him? There were some things you've been questioning God about he's already told you no about. Shut the door. told you to leave them alone. Shut the door. He's already told you to trust him. Shut the door. I've already told you to trust me concerning that. He said, I've already spoke to you concerning that. Shut the door. Because when you shut the door, <laughs> I'm getting ready to cut on your flow. So now I'm gonna declare it. So go in there to shut the door, and then the oil will begin to flow. There was a transformation that began to happen while the door was closed. Here you are trying to get everybody to watch your maturation process. <laughs> I'll prove it to you because you post on Facebook all the time. You post on Instagram all the time. You post on Snap all the time. And the posts you put on Snap don't even match the life you live on your other social media. <laughs> now, I'm going to say something that some people who are watching might not agree with, and I'm going to say something that there's some people in this room may not agree with, but I'm okay. I came with the amen corner. You've got to be careful of some of the things that you say. Because it doesn't give you because you, you live how you want to live on Snap. You live how you want to live on Facebook. You live how you want to live on IG. Then you turn around and live how you want to live in your close friends on IG. The people that you can trust. Am I all right? Am I all right? I 
And if you're going to shut the door, you've got to be willing to close the door on everything. Because the oil that is coming is so serious that it has the potential to take your life. Lord, there's an oil that is coming because God is trying to pour out oil in the pure vessels and he's been searching on who can take the oil. I don't know why they can tell you for the last three months I've been talking about fresh oil. I don't know why God won't let me leave this season but there is an oil that is coming not only to the remnant but to the faithful. Oh God, to the people that did not change their conversation to the people that did not turn their back on God. There is is an oil that is coming on the Lakuskateva and the Labatoria and the Lahaya. There is an oil that is coming to the people of God that stood by their confession. For God I live and for God I die. I've got a charge to keep and I've got to glorify. There are people in this room that almost gave up in private and in public. But I'm here to let you know that you ought to be grateful that God gave you back your resignation letter. Oh God, there were some preachers that almost walked away from God. Why are you playing hard to get? There were some preachers in this room that almost walked away from God because the call and the chaos was too much. There were people around you that did not believe what was on the inside of you. So they began to buck up against you. But can I help you? Can I help you for a minute? The same people that were giving you problems, where are they now? Oh God. There were people that were causing chaos in your life, but they have all, they have all fallen by the wayside. I want to let you know tonight that if you can shut the door, then God can cut on the floor. I don't know who you are in this room, but you've got a job before we go any further in this message. You've got to think in your finite mind, what do you need to close the door on? E flat, please. What do you need? Thank you. What do you need to close the door on? And so, it is my prayer that I have not bored you tonight with my introduction. <laughs> I had to bring you, I'm on that way. Um, and I came all the way from Lynchburg. Um, it is. I came all the way from Lynchburg on my way to Charlotte to let you know tonight that you've got a job. You've got to shut the door. Because the oil that is coming tonight is going to cost you something. Um, if I was somewhere else, I would preach the message necessary isolations. Because what God's about to do in your life, he's got to get you on by yourself. I said, what God's about to do in your life, he's got to get you on by yourself. Is there anybody in the house tonight that believes that what God is doing in your life, it's going to require you to be by yourself? It may not feel good, but what God's about to do in your life, it's going to require you to be by yourself. It may not feel good, but what God's going to do in your life, it's going to require for you to be by yourself. And I know that you might be frustrated about what God is doing in your life, but it might require, it will require you to walk a lonely road, but you've got to be okay with it. It will require you to walk by yourself. They may not understand the warfare that you'll go through. They may not understand at all. They will not understand the fights that you'll have to go through. But is there anybody in the room tonight that says it does not matter what I face? My yes will not change. Is there anybody in the room tonight that believes that what God is doing in your life, it will require isolation. You'll have to walk this road by yourself, but it's all right. Because the truth be told is that the season I'm in, I prefer to be by myself anyway. I would rather 
have an honest enemy than a fickle friend. And I walk by myself, no matter what it costs, no matter what it takes. No, 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 no. No matter what it takes, I'll walk the road. If it's for the oil, I'll do what I have to do. But, Jalen, let's get out of here, please. But is there anybody in the room tonight that believes that the oil of the Lord is resting in this room and there's an impartation that's coming? There's an impartation that's coming. There's an impartation that's coming. There's an impartation that's coming. You gotta walk through the process so you don't understand. Everything is all spiritual. The same person that fixed the exit sign is the same person that just removed it. In other words, you've got to be all in. You can't get in and out. You've got to be all in. in and all. Is there anybody in the room tonight that says, I need fresh oil? No matter, no matter, no matter what it takes, I need fresh oil. I'll shut the door so that the oil can pour. There's fresh oil about to hit this house like a tsunami, but you got to open up. Hold on, shut up. I got to shoot my arrow tonight because that's power that's got to hit this region. And I come tonight as an apostolic voice to make sure that the oil flows through apex, that the oil flows through Kerry and Raleigh. I come tonight as an apostolic midwife. I'm your pusher. I come tonight to let you know that the oil of the Lord is in the room tonight. And if you want it, if you want the oil, I'm there. You. Take the next few seconds. Open your mouth. Lift your hands. Open your mouth and shout for the oil that's coming. Shout for the oil that's coming. Open your mouth. Wait till the panel 
is over. Don't wait till the battle is over. Don't wait till the battle is over. But open up your mouth in this room and shout for fresh oil. Shout for fresh oil. Shout for fresh oil. I said shout for fresh oil. It's in this room. Open up your mouth. The oil is coming now. The heavens are about to open. Open up your mouth and receive fresh oil. Open your mouth now. your hands and for the next 30 seconds open your mouth for fresh oil fresh fresh
room I want you I know I know we're in a confined space because Evolution Empowerment Cathedral hasn't come yet I'm I'm talking about the building with the full commercial kitchen I'm talking about the building that has the school and the nursery in it. We haven't talked about it. the building that has classrooms. So that people can get Bible application and life application. Skills. Teaching people how to read. Helping people get their diplomas. I know what I see. as what God's getting ready to do. There's got to be a cry in you. You know, um, I realize no matter how high I get in God, I never stop crying for the oil. I never stop crying for the oil because every level is a different level of consecration. Um, let me tell you, I go through random times of consecration where I'll just stop calling. I'll stop answering the phone. It's not that you did anything wrong. It's just God wants to do something. My wife can tell you, we'll be in the house and she'll be talking to me about something I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going up. Because I'm that deep in because I'm that wonderful. I just want to make sure I'm always up in the high place. Because I don't want to miss nothing. Because I spent so much of my life being low. Why not be high? I spent so much of my life being low. Why not be high? And some of y'all spend so much of your life being high. <laughs> Why not be high? See, you spend the majority of your life getting high and not being high. Am I all right? I got protection. I ain't judging you. I'm just saying change partners. But I got, I ain't had to smoke to get it. That's it. See, I'm old, so I ain't had to smoke to get this high. I didn't have to drink to get this high. 
Some of y'all went to a meeting on a Friday night, whatever, some of y'all did that. I found God at a birthday party. We was playing around calling Jesus, and the next thing you know, we all got arrested. And ever since I found him, he's never left my side. I'm sorry, I get excited about being saved. I know what it costs. And so if you really want this oil, I need somebody in this room that believes that what God's about to drop on this house is going to set you up for the next two years. There, yonder, Kiskata, there is an anointing that's in this room right now that's getting ready to set you up. It's an impartation that's about to hit your belly. I need you to posture your spirit. And I want this entire house to go up right now. And for the next few minutes, I want this whole room to begin to cry for the oil because what God's about to drop on us is going to start a revival that will set the entire state on fire. I need you to open your mouth right now and cry for the oil. Cry! Come on Zion, cry for it! Cry for it! Father, tonight, we want the oil, whatever it costs, we want it tonight. Come on, Zion, a few more minutes. Out of your belly, cry! Cry for it! Cry for it! Come on, Zion, you're right there. You're right there. You're right there, cry! How? Hey, they come. Hold on, my tons of the court told you. Come on, Zion, cry for it. Release your arrow tonight. Ho! Shonda Baha. Ho, ho, shot. Ho! Give me the arrow tonight. Come up in the high place. Come on. Come on, Zion, cry for the oil. Come on, come out of that low place. Cry. Out of your belly, cry. Ho, ho, ho. Come on, Zion, cry for it. Out of your belly. Cry for it. Out of your belly.
of the oil. Come on, cry for it. Father, we want the oil. Father, we want the oil. Those same hands, can you lift them tonight? Lift those hands all over this room. Just for that major thing. Lift those hands all over this room. And can the sound of worship ring out of this room right now? Come on, lift your voice. Now I said every person in this room, lift the sound. your voice and I will I will not be silent where are the worshipers I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will always I will always I will always come with me. I will always. I will always. Hold on, baby. Cut my ass. I will always. Come on, worshipers. I will always worship you. And I will not be sad. Worship. Come on, worshipers. As long as I am breathing, get I Just sing it, the Korean. Sing as long as I am breathing, as long I am. I will. Can you lift your hands and let the sound of worship rock? Come on. I will. Scott, hey, always I will sing. Always I will, I will always come. What made this is my ass. I will always, I will, no matter if I'm painting in my body, I will always, I will. 
this is my response I'll always I will always always say always say always 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 somebody lift your voice and cry from your belly now Come away, the worshipers. Open up your mouth and let the sound of worship. I will always worship you. Because you have rescued my life. Rescued my life, and I'm never going sing. You have rescued my life. something about to happen. As long as I am breathing. Keep playing, Josh. Listen. For the next 15 seconds, I'm not going to coach you. Let the sound of the grateful people arise. Come on, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Lift it. Come on, people of God, lift your voice and worship them. restaurants with all of you but there is something that we've all been guilty of and I want to pin it with the closing of this text I want to so act like I've got some sense and I'm going to sit down there's a spirit I have on me go to a restaurant <laughs> when I used to pay in cash because um, I don't do nothing in cash right now but I used to pay in cash I think my bill was $36 if I had two 20s I would tell the waiter I don't need any change keep the change I would pay the bill and I would tell her to keep the change. The prophet tells this woman um, <coughs> pay thy debt. You will 
children give us to us. I'm going to say something to you and how you respond to it is your business. Just don't mess up my friends, church. It's just your pastor of the seeker. You ready? The Lord in these next 48 hours is going to drop a strategy on you that you and the next three generations will live without lack. He told her, what I gave you, sell it. I'm about to give you something that's going to work for you. Sell it, pay the debt that you have, but it's going to be so much you'll be able to live, not just exist. I need about 30 people in this room to open your mouth because your next move will be a move you can live off of. I said open your mouth because my next move I'll live off of it. Open your mouth because I'm a live off the next move. You don't think you're going to move. But I said, open your mouth because your next move. Yeah. I said, your next move. You better pack your bags. You might have to live out of some boxes for a while. But God's about to change your address. Yeah. I said, God. Open your mouth because your next move is going to be the one that you're going to live off of. When did it happen when I moved? How did it happen I moved? Is it my next move? Live off the rest. Open up your mouth, Zion. See the runway coming, and I don't want to, uh, because we've been cleared off. We've been cleared to take flight. And uh, um, where, where the people of God tonight in this room, I feel like it's no shade to those who are watching. Uh, God bless your online audience. The Lord keep you. Uh, it's no shade to those who are watching, but there's a special tangible anointing in this room that there are things that you were not able to do before. Um. Yeah, you know what? Okay, here it is. I want you to hear me for the full statement, okay? And after you hear the totality of this statement, let this prophecy hit your feet. Yeah. That you're getting ready to live with what you could not afford last season. You're 
getting ready to live with what you could not afford last season. Okay. You're getting ready to live in what you could not, well, you praise about the bathroom. What you could not afford last season. I need this whole house to go up and praise because it's coming and we're about to live on the rest. Now, praise him now. your next move was going to be a move that you could live off of. And some of us don't understand what I'm saying. God's getting ready to take you to another level that the enemy thought you would never get to. I need this house. I need us to praise him because we are finally coming into what the enemy tried to stop us from. 
You missed what I just said. I said, we are finally coming into what the enemy tried to block us from. I need praises in this room. I need us to go up and praise because the blockage is over. I said, the blockage is over. I need dancers. Praise them because the blockage, the blockage. song has a new meaning because 33 is the year the doctors told me I'd never see and so since I'm still bleeding out the creek that I'm gonna make it I'm gonna get through this it's my season to live yeah the queer I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna get through this it's my season to live. Clap your hands in here. Because everything's going to be all right. 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 You've got one job. Whatever you do, whatever you do, get, 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 get up, get up, get up, get up, get up and live. Get up and live.
Be seated, please. Be seated. We must sing. Be seated. I want us to sing tonight. I want us to sing. We've had a hard season, but we're still decreeing. All is well. 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 Be seated. Be seated. He 
will. He will do it. Just what he's saying. He will. You're gonna stop this. Oh, I decided to praise him. Cause he'll do. He will. He'll do. Just what he said. situation. Heal my family. Heal my family. He'll step in. 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 He'll do it. Exceedingly Abundantly, more than I could ask or think. I've been crying, I've been waiting, but today's the day. Today's the day. Now's the moment. Now's the time. I've been waiting, but the wait is over. The wait is over. The wait. The wait. He'll do. You can look at the Scots. He'll do just what he'll do. He will. And in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to say that he did. He did it. He did it. Just what he said. He did. Just what he said. He did. Yeah, no, no. Get it out, though. Get it out, though. So, Josh. Dollar sign. Evolution empowerment. He'll do. Here, Josh. If you know there's a promise over your life, start dancing now. He'll do. He made me a promise. I'm dancing with a promise. It's not empty either. He's going to do what he said. me a promise. He gonna save my family. He made me a promise. 